Hello everyone, welcome back to Not Quite New Minecraft. This is episode 9. I just finished recording the last episode and taking the thumbnail photo for it. Which, um, I think I mentioned in the last video, I've been uh, using custom thumbnails for the first time, but I never really mentioned what I've been doing. I don't really edit the video, the photos, I'm kind of trying to go for an older style where I can just use a single screenshot and that should be enough. Hopefully. Um, I kind of try to get the message across of what I've done in the video. Usually it's something to do with expanding the home. So I try to kind of get that in somewhere. Um, I usually just make a copy of the world, go into creative, and try to get a good looking screenshot, and that's kind of what I've been using. If I get any ideas for a way to edit them to look cool, then maybe I'll try that out, but right now I'm just doing that. So I finally set out for some exploring. Oh, looks like there's a, a shipwreck right here. Might as well take a look, see what's inside it might have some uh, carrots or potatoes. If I can farm those. Ooh, an emerald. Some iron and gold too, that's pretty nice. Should probably uh, get some air here. And there should be a chest kind of in this area too, I think. Yeah. Not all the potatoes are poisonous. Some moss. I'll grab the stew, I guess. But I don't think I can plant the poison potatoes, so there's no point really taking those. The carrots are good, though. Oh, Sorry, I'm just seeing the, the cod for the first time. I keep trying to see if any of the mob textures are different, and it doesn't really look like it. I wish the resource pack kind of changed those a bit, too, because I think that would kind of add to the charm, but they don't really seem that off, so it's not huge thing. Ah, there goes my chair being loud again. Man, I remember in old Minecraft hitting a boat against the shore would invariably mean that it breaks or if you hit it against anything or even if you break it yourself it'll be gone for sure. So like I said in the last episode I'm trying to just kind of adventure around trying to see the landscape Oh, there's a pillager tower over there. Well, I guess in the spirit of adventuring, I should go over there. Maybe, uh, have a little bit of a fight. My bow is not, uh, terribly good. I really haven't repaired it or anything. It's just kind of an old bow I got from a skeleton. My footsteps are kind of out of sync. I don't know if that's just the, the sound being weird. Yeah, that's kind of odd. Oh, it's right on the, the edge of a snowy area, too. That's kind of cool. Uh, we are still on normal difficulty, and I don't really want to uh, get my first death here. Uh, I've already... Uh, already kind of got found out. Wow, I never really saw this many... Uh, training dummies here that they have. It's an iron golem. I'll let this guy out. Might be able to help me. There we go. My little friend there helping me out a bit. I don't think they've got anything really super useful here. I do want to see if they've got any allays, though. Because, uh, despite how much I've played... Oh, I think I see him over there. Despite how much I've played near Minecraft, which, to be fair, still isn't that much, but all that I've played of it, I haven't really seen any allays in my own game. And it looks like they've got a couple cages of them over here. Now, I don't know if you have to give them something for them to follow you. 
Oh boy. I heard that guy running up on me there. I'll go through the tower first and then I think I'll try to get the LAs. I do want to bring some of them home with me just because I think they look nice. We got some wheat here. Oh wow, the dark oak logs look kind of weird. Some potatoes too, that's always nice. Yeah, the dark oak logs. I don't know if this was the older look for them, but the inside is definitely a lot brighter. That's kind of weird. I don't need to bring those with me. The environment here is just so nice. I might come back to get the LAs because I don't really want to bring them with me all the way. Oh, Iron Golem still doing work out here. Yeah, I think I might come back for the LAs. This isn't too far from my house, so I can always come back. I don't really want to go into the snow. I know there's um, powdered snow now that can swallow you in the mountains, and I, I don't think I want to have my first death be from that, so I'll steer clear for now. It's a pretty cool looking cave. Man, I remember back in Pocket Edition, there was a seed that I found. I obviously forget it now, but I found a seed where I spawned next to a mountain. It was, it was a kind of small mountain, it wasn't really that impressive. But the thing about it that really intrigued me was there was lava right there. There was lava coming up the side of the mountain. Oh, look at that. That's beautiful. Yeah. So there was lava coming out the side of the mountain just flowing down it, just a single block of lava. But because this was Pocket Edition before they added buckets to creative and your worlds were limited size, finding any lava in your world at all was rare. If none generated in the chunks that you spawned in, then you just didn't have any. So that was always a cool seed that I really liked having, even after they added buckets to creative and the worlds were infinite. I still went back to that seed or tried to find something like it. And this little formation here too reminds me of another seed, because I know that the beta generation is famous for all the big sprawling open areas like this, but even bigger. And there were a million seeds I found that were that had big overhang areas where a bunch of mobs spawned, and that was kind of like an early mob arena, almost. Oh, I just realized I don't really need these fences. And I think those seeds were always fun to play on, and there was always the idea of making some really cool base in the mountains like that. And so I always really liked those seeds. And I think they were always interesting to see. There was also really the... There was also the idea of... Oh, is that a, there's a village over there. I guess I might go in there. But yeah, there was also the idea of, obviously, because I played the game when I was younger, well, I almost fell in there. Of course, I always wanted to find the cool large mountains and blow them up with a lot of TNT. I think my, my favorite parts of any mod showcase back then were either all the mods that added more explosives or um, I always skipped ahead and everything to the part where they showed off the mobs. I don't know why, looking back on it, that that wasn't always the most interesting part of any mod, but for me at the time, I was always captivated by that particular part of any mod showcase. That was always the the thing that I really liked. I'd usually just skip the crafting recipes because I was never going to play the mods. Because I didn't have uh, Minecraft at the time, on PC at least. But I always liked looking at the mobs. I also did try, um, I'm sure everyone else has too, downloading the sketchy apps on the App Store saying they had Minecraft mods or all the ones with add-ons that weren't really mods but were more so just resource packs and behavior packs which are kind of a relic of pocket edition or well i guess they're really in all of bedrock well cat's going around 
But yeah, it's a part of all of Bedrock Edition where um, they don't really have mods, they have uh, data packs almost that change the behavior of things that already exist. So like, if I wanted to add, um, say, a lion, I'd have to sacrifice one of the cat skins and make it so that every time one of those spawns, it's a lion, and maybe change the spawn conditions for it or something so that they only spawn in certain areas. It's that kind of thing where you can't really add to the game, you can only change what's already there. Which, in some ways, I think is pretty interesting. I think that's kind of a cool way of looking at Minecraft in total. I think I'm gonna have to sleep in one of these villagers' houses. I'll have to kick them out of their beds, probably. I just don't want to be out too long at night. I think I might drink this suspicious stew also, because I think they just give a random potion effect, so I kind of want to see what it does. It's already gone, it looks like. I guess it really didn't do much. Yeah, the the new village style with the old textures is kind of a a weird look. I've never really seen stuff like this. It's cool, but it feels weird. None of these houses really have anything important in them. I guess I could take the the brewing stands from the the churches there, but. Without blaze rods, I don't really have any use for them anyway, so no real reason to. The I never really realized the mossy cobblestone in the houses. I guess it's just kind of there for the, the detail. I usually tend to set up around villages or use villagers for other things when I play. Um, especially newer versions, but I... I don't really want to do that this time around. I feel like that will kind of ruin what I'm going for. I'll definitely stop by villages if I see them like this one, but I don't really want to rely too much on them. That's why I'm not really looting all the hay bales, because that'll make me like a lot of bread. And I don't know. I've seen people say that the village and pillage update kind of ruined the game for them because it removed a lot of the challenge and made the game just about finding the nearest village so that you can get all this stuff from it and then not have to worry about food. And I do agree with that to some extent. There is definitely a lot of challenge removed. Oh, look at those mountains there. But I don't think it ruins the game. I think it just takes away part of the challenge of having to find your own food which doesn't ruin the game as much as it just changes a little bit. And if you don't want to use villages for their resources, then that's just on you to do that. You can decide for yourself whether or not to do that. It reminds me of... Um, I had this old um, Minecraft magazine that I got a long time ago. I, I think I still have it somewhere. I read through the whole thing, obviously, and I uh, saw at the back of it there were challenges. There were a set of, I think, ten challenges that you yourself could partake in, and there was no in-game mechanic that forced it. There wasn't anything like that. It was just, you know, up to you to see if you wanted to try this and see if you could do it. It was, um, from what I remember, there was one about... Um, spending the whole game underground, or only coming up when it was night, something like that. There was something about uh, not eating any meat or not killing any animals, and that's about all I can remember. But I think it's challenges like those, the little seeing if you can do certain things, if you can play the game a certain way, that has kind of always survived through Minecraft. There have always been people trying to see what's possible or what they can do. And I think that that's really interesting that that's always kind of remained constant. I don't know why this cave's glowing. Oh, is it the glow lichen on the insides of it? That's kind of cool. 
I remember I used to make houses in these little pockets like this all the time. That's really neat. But yeah, there have always been people coming up with challenges or inventive ways of playing the game. And I think that that's pretty cool, because before it was just survival challenges or um, goals within a survival series. Oh, there's another village here. And now it's kind of spread to the 100 Days series that people do, where they try to survive with a specific kind of theme going for the whole game. And that's also kind of cool. That's, um, that's really interesting content to watch. And... Oh, sorry, that's just sugarcane over there and some sheep. I thought it was something else. And I think, kind of in that spirit of, um thinking about the the old magazine that I got, there are definitely a bunch of books and stuff about Minecraft. And the ones that jump out to me right away are the uh, the survival handbooks. I think that's what they were called. But the, the little handbooks that had, there was combat, redstone, I think there was just a basic one, and then there was a building. There's one for building. I have all four of those. I think they made a fifth one, apparently. So I might have to get that one just to complete my set and kind of remind me of all that old stuff. And I know I, I read them a bunch of times back when I um, back when I got them. There were some other books that I got related to Minecraft. I don't think I read them all the way through, because, you know, the, the survival handbooks, I think, really have that perfect conciseness, and they're almost like a handheld wiki. And I think that that's why pretty much every kid who played the game had those books, and all the people that I know of who had them really enjoyed them. Even if you didn't read a lot as a kid, you probably still picked those up just because you were interested in the game. That's another cool mountain over there. I think I also had some, uh, some, there were some novels written around the game. There's people, people talking about their, um, stories in it. I think there was one series that I read a few books of where it was someone who played the game a bunch and was, uh, sucked into the game. I forget much of the story beats of it, I just remember that kind of detail of it, and I read two or three of those books. And there was one series I I had a few books of, and I think I still have them now. Um, but I never really I never really read them. Oh, there's an old portal there. I think I I got into a beginning of the first book and I got scared and didn't read it. Maybe I'll I'll have to go back to those now. I know there's not a whole lot about the game on its own that scares me now, so I might as well. So I guess I'll take the iron. Let's see, any other chests around, or is it just... I guess I'll take the gold, too. Make another Herobrine shrine. Oh. Oh. I need to be careful around the magma. Oh, there's a big ravine here. I haven't really seen many uh, ravines now that the the um, minimum Y levels kind of changed. When I was playing on um, a modded world that's in 1.12.2, is there a dungeon around here? Or is it just underground? That might just be underground. But yeah, I was playing on uh, 1.12.2 for modded, which is one of, the, one of the two main versions that I play modded Minecraft on. And I guess it's because of the new cave generation, but when I was playing there, there were so many huge ravines underground, and those were, like, the main big way of getting resources. But here, I find I don't really see many of those ravines anymore. Which is really a shame, because ravines were kind of the main feature of caves, or they were the big spot to find resources in. They were one of the main large features of Minecraft's terrain that everyone kind of looked for. And I know I personally really always kind of wanted to find a ravine. I always meant to, like, build a cool house in one. But I don't think I ever really did that in any of my worlds. 
I think maybe once in creative I did that. I find something that I, I don't really do now that I used to do was really just play creative mode. I used to play maybe even more creative than survival, where I just try to build whatever I could. Oh my god, that is huge. Wow. I want to go see that. But yeah, I used to play more creative than survival because I just build whatever. And that was kind of the main draw of it was that I was just doing a bunch of building, having fun with that. Wow. Oh my god. And the floating bits. That's another old relic of the terrain generation that we don't see as much anymore. But yeah, I used to do a whole lot of building, and even in modded I'd do a bunch of building and creative because I really like to do make these huge expansive bases with all the cool modded equipment I could think of. But I haven't really done that in a while. I think because nowadays I find more of the joy in Minecraft, especially in modded, is getting to the point where I can make whatever I want or progressing far in the game and having all the technology and doing all that stuff myself or even in vanilla making farms so that I can basically have all the resources at my disposal and it's more a factor of time that limits me to whatever I'm building. And I think I never really built anything with creative only blocks or I never really got into command blocks a whole lot. Oh, the smithing table looks kind of cool. And so I think a big part of the the joy of building in Minecraft is that oh, I'll just leave these here. Is that um uh, the accomplishment of having gathered all the materials and having taken the time and survival to build everything yourself? I think that really um I think that really makes it feel more worth it and feel more earned almost. It definitely feels better to have built something huge in survival mode than to have built it in creative. So I think maybe that's why I've kind of gone more towards survival. Because even if I want to make something big, I usually try to do it in survival and make a huge project out of it. I'm just going to sleep for the night here. I think uh, this is going to have to be my first video where I end the video away from my house, which is kind of a shame. I've been trying to keep that kind of consistent, but I guess I can't really do that forever. I got little rabbits here. Oh, that was a stray. I wonder what the, uh, the effect arrows look like. I guess it didn't drop any. Yeah, I think there is certainly a lot more pride in building something in survival. And so, and maybe just the lack of challenge in creative mode is why I don't really play it as much. Who knows though, maybe I'll um, I'll get back to doing that more now. Because I still do play creative to mostly test things out. Like, um, if I want to make something, I'll usually kind of get a rough draft of it in creative mode, or I'll get a a plan for it kind of going. Um, for a bit I tried to do some stuff with redstone in creative, but I never really had the the creativity myself to come up with different things. And so, I don't know, I kind of stopped doing that for a bit, which is a shame. And I think that's also why I play more survival, is because in survival, I tend to build things that directly respond to the needs I have in the world. Like, that happens with a lot of the farms. Like, if I need more food, I'll build a large farm. If I need cobblestone for a big wall, then I'll build a cobblestone farm. It's things like that, where it's not as much building stuff just for the look of it, but building stuff because I need the resources it'll make, or I need it for some purpose. And the beauty of it all kind of comes from having everything working together and having a bunch of useful stuff. I think that's really the main reason that I enjoy it more. I think I'm gonna... Oh wow, I don't think I've seen this building in uh, 
pillages before. Oh, and the lectern. That looks... That's one of my favorite of the, um, of the new textures turned into old. I think that looks really good. Sorry there, guys. I'm going to be taking all your books. I just need these at home for when I get some bookshelves made. Maybe I'll do uh, some enchanting soon, but I don't know. I kind of want to keep it as um, early game as I can. Because I know it's really easy to just grind a bunch of emeralds and get enchanted diamond tools and all the stuff you could want from villagers or get a librarian with a mending book enchantment, but I don't really want to do that. I don't really want to rush the game. Man, this music is really nice. Some leather pants. I've still got my iron ones though, so I don't really need them. Anything in here? I oh, just more bread. Let's see. We're coming up on the half hour mark here. I've been recording for 26 minutes. So. I think I'm going to call it here. And I'm going to end the video. Unfortunately, I am a, a decent ways away from the house, so I won't be able to end it there. So, I'm going to end the video here. All oh, the wolves are attacking rabbits here. I want to see if I can get a, a nice view of some terrain, but I think we're kind of in the snowy area, so I can't really see any. I'm not quite sure what I'll use for the thumbnail. I might go back and get a shot of some of the mountains. Actually, you know what? I think, kind of to show the end of the little journey that I did in this video, I think I'll get a photo of these ice spikes, and I'll use that for the thumbnail. Because so I try to make the... I want to make the thumbnail relevant to the video, and I think the best way to do that is just to get a screenshot right from the right from the world where I stopped. So yeah, I think this will be a nice spot. When we come back, I'll take my boat through here. Let's get that screenshot there. And I think I'm going to end the video here. So thank you all for watching. Actually, I'll, I'll end it like this. Thank you all for watching. Like the video if you enjoyed. Uh, subscribe if you want to. Links for the resource packs are in the description. And I will see you in the next video, which I think might be episode... 10. So thank you all for watching. Goodbye.